When we started off, the, there was no method. It was just madness. For a very simple reason, it was a new space and we were experimenting a lot. Over the 10 years, we have realized with what are the spaces that we are in and for the next 10 years, what are the spaces we need to focus on. So there is method to the madness now. We started off 10 years back by understanding three aspects of the ecosystem. Schools, universities and bottom of the pyramid. If you look at it from a Pakistan's perspective, you realize that you cannot just work in one particular vertical. You cannot only work in bottom of the pyramid or schools or universities or investments. You need to focus on the legislation as well. You need to focus on collaborative economy in which, in which your private sector needs to look at social investments and impact in a more uh, valuable manner. In which your not-for-profit sector needs to understand that there is limited uh, grants and there's, there's limited money now because of whatever is happening globally. So social enterprise basically addresses um, you know these vertical specific challenges but as a, as a complete economy as well it, it's a it's a way forward that i truly believe that can actually change uh, the the national economy as well because human capacity and human development is at the core of impact philosophy and once you actually have uh, a stakeholder that understands the uh, importance of that life and the ecosystem gets evolved much quicker. It means a business space that focuses on improving society through environmental, financial uh, and societal change, yet making money. And if you look at the, the existing landscape it's not for profit and then there is for profit so impact or social enterprise comes right in between as a philosophy and now as a legislation as well inshallah in pakistan in which um, a startup or a company will be able to make profit and give it to their shareholders but by solving a social challenge It's not just the ultimate space right now, but it's the beginning. SAS policy that the government has come out with predominantly talks about that. You can actually feel the intent of the government in what it says. Again, it's not perfect. It's not um, extremely articulate, but in the right direction. Look at private sector. Now, private sector uh, conventionally does CSR or conventional uh, investments. Uh, you will be pleasantly surprised by the fact that there are very important private sector st stakeholders and like Engro who have created a benchmark of investing in the impact space and in social enterprises. But the most important bit is the youth. Youth understands this. Youth feels for it and youth are willing to take risks to make things work. I'm not saying all the social enterprise startups will be phenomenal um, unicorns coming out of Pakistan. No. Not all the social enterprises or startups need, need to be or can be unicorns. And, and, and hoping for that is, is, is delusional. But they are willing to take that bet because they feel they can, they can solve a community challenge through a business model and it just resonates with them the way it resonated with us 10 years back. What I see a, a barrier is 
access to finance and capital in a manner that it should be for social enterprises and, 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 and startups. And I think the capacity uh, and appetite of risk for the conventional financial service institutions to increase that is something much needed. And if you go to London, if you go to HSBC or any bank over there and you've got a business plan uh, and a decent business plan, they will actually give you a loan of five to seven thousand dollars or pounds. Why can't that happen in Pakistan? Probably government would need to subsidize. Government already have a youth business loan program. And distribution of that and developing the capacity of the financial services institution to realize that if they take a higher punt and a risk on a startup today, this might turn into an IPO and a, and a, and a listed company in the future. If they invest in 100, two might turn out. But now those two would actually compensate for those 98 losses that that bank would actually occur. And that's worth it. And that's something that the financial services institution need to do. And unless and until institutions like financial services and SMEDA and public sector organizations do not understand these new businesses, I think they, they, they will remain, they will be, uh, this, this would be a huge barrier to growth uh, in, in our country. So that's, that's one. Um, the second bit is allowing a one-stop solution for global investors to invest in Pakistan and make that process easier. And third bit that I feel that is, is, is very important is communication of government's policies and initiative for individuals like you and me. Probably you and me are rather more uh, savvy, but a young startup or a young business or a layman who does not understand the implication of a policy or a legislation change, which is good, but that person doesn't even know that that legislation exists and is so good for them. So just creating a communication channel in which all the good work that the government is doing needs to be communicated. So there are takers out there. There are people who actually use those services. The diaspora of Pakistan. That is a phenomenal um, strength. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think $20 billion of inward remittances come to Pakistan. Mobilizing that, and I think government has taken an initiative in this regard, but you, you need to understand the, the strengths and the aspirations of diasporas, let's say in Saudi Arabia, are different compared to the ones in the UK, compared to the ones uh, in, in, in the US where there are a lot of doctors. So every diaspora community in every country that, uh, that exists have got a different mindset, a different aspirational level, a different investment appetite and mobilizing that and creating conduit uh, specifically for them is going to really, really change um, the future of this country. In the impact space, uh, the government really need to invest more um, in understanding because they are the biggest umbrella of social impact in Pakistan. And I think they're just right in the right direction. The intent is there, but there needs to be more investment in terms of thoughts and philosophies as well, in thought leadership as well. The private sector, there are fantastic examples that I've already mentioned. They need to move away from conventional CSR to social investments and leverage on the supply and distribution communities that they have access to and create because they, they, they can do it very quickly. Uh, the, de the, the development sector is moving away from conventional grant and aid to social investment, which is a great indicator. The youth uh, is already the reason all that, all that is happening. So 
a more collaborative environment um, where legislation to investment both are aligned, be it in tech space, be it in uh, diaspora investments, be it in social impact investments, be it in creative economy, be it in agri, you would be surprised to know and you'll be pleasantly surprised to know that the Thomson Reuters Foundation's uh, annual um, poll has come out and Pakistan and the top 45 economies have moved to 14th position, jumped up 18 positions. So that demonstrates that the Pakistani ecosystem for impact is progressing at an extremely fast pace and it's just a matter of time we would be one of the top three leading economies in impact space if the momentum is continued, if the direction is kind of followed through with all the collaborative stakeholders.